welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Roberts Municipal Stadium in Evansville, Indiana, for another tremendous program of action from the United States Hot Rod Association with championship monster truck racing and mud bog action. I'm Brett Kepner, and along with Shelly Herman. Shelly, we've got monster trucks and mud bog racers like you wouldn't believe here tonight. And I'm really excited to see just how the two of them stack up. That's true. The monster trucks are going to give us an interesting angle. We've got monster tanks and monster trucks, and they'll be facing off the winner of the monster truck four-wheeler and monster tank class in a special championship finale. And this is going to be fun. I saw some of the preliminaries last night, and just to see these things move is a completely different experience than the monster trucks. They are wild, and of course we have the brand new Bigfoot Fast Tracks of Bob Chandler here, one of its very first appearances. In the championship mud bog program, however, we have the absolute superstars of this sport, and we saw the quickest elapsed time ever in this short distance, 65 feet, of 1.68 seconds last night. And that short track was really a factor, too. There were some real close calls last night, so much so that some of the guys have been up all night retooling their cars so that they can win this evening. It's very true. In fact, many of the drivers who use two-speed or three-speed transmissions aren't even shifting in 65 feet of full throttle action. It's going to be a great night, and we'll be back in just a moment with the start of championship action here from Evansville, Indiana, the United States Harvard Association Championship Monster Truck and Mud Bog Spectacular. Ladies and gentlemen, Roberts Municipal Stadium here in Evansville, Indiana for the United States Hot Rod Association's championship program. And the first segment of this event yeah. will include the ever-popular monster trucks. And the first board entry up this weekend is a brand new piece of equipment from the little town of Woodstock, Illinois, right up in the north-central part of the state. This is the first blood board being driven by Rob Fuchs. And Fuchs, although he is a relative newcomer to this sport, won the preliminary round. Now remember, we'll be seeing both full four-wheel monster trucks and tanks around this eight-car, 190-foot oval. Indeed, the quickest elapsed time from both categories of machines will meet in the championship final, Shelley. This is a home-built truck at a cost of over $80,000. And Rob's Ford hits the first set of cars out. A tremendous job bouncing around a little bit on the landing. Now he has to make an 18-foot turn, a left-hand turn with only an 18-foot radius, and line up for the second set of cars, and he didn't get it completely lined up like that there are some disadvantages one of which he's got to get those cars crunched before everybody else and that slows you down it's true it's it's much easier to get around of course with the cars crushed flat the next machine pulling out is indeed one of the wildest new machines of the monster truck circuit of the united states Harvard association this is the incredible samson chevrolet originally campaigned by the man who originated the samson line of trucks don maples from alabama now being driven in only its second event ever by longtime united states Harvard association tractor pulling champion dan patrick and earlier we had a chance to talk to dan about the differences between monster trucks and regular pulling Tractors. I think the thing that really I wasn't prepared for was the hard landing if I didn't hit the cars fast enough. The guys that I talked to uh, that uh, have years of experience said, you know, you have to have your speed up when you hit the cars and don't let off of it too soon. And uh, the first time I did, I let off too soon and just body slammed me and I thought, boy, I really got into something I can't handle here. It's really that violent inside there. It always looks so violent, but is it that rough in the cab? Uh, it can be very rough. Uh, you really have to be strapped tight. Uh, Mike, when I get in the car, he straps me. We pull a band, you know, as tight as we can get it, and, and that seems to take a lot of the shock out. Well, you're used to multi-engine supercharged vehicles that always have had a tremendous amount of power, but you said after your first ride that you were quite amazed with the throttle response in that truck. Uh, yeah, I have to give a lot of credit to, you know, to Don Mavis who built the truck, and uh, you see these things are geared so low that, you know, the horsepower is there instantly. Um, I was really surprised that, you know, every time I hit the throttle, it was there. It was ready to go. I guess the big question then is, do you like being in the cab one of these things? Yeah, I really enjoy it. I, I, get, I get pumped up. I, I really do enjoy it. Well, good luck to you today. Thank you very much. You see Dan Patrick leaning out of the cockpit, motioning to his crew chief, Mike Hollingsworth. Interestingly, Hollingsworth, the guy now talking to Patrick in the cab, is the man behind the old Bushwhacker supercharged pulling dragster, ran his own Bush beer-sponsored funny car for a couple of years at the pulling circuits of the United States U.S. Office Association. It's a heck of a team. Love experience. Another Patrick is going for hype, and he is still on a roll, not hesitating for a moment. He sure learned from experience on that last time. He went up and over with the greatest of ease. A little sideways on the approach on that one, but he lands it and crosses the finish line. A little smoke from out underneath the wheel wells. And Dan Patrick has got to be happy with that second performance. Always that look of competitiveness on his face, Shelley. He sure does have it. He's so intense about the whole experience. I, it's so hard for me to even 
fathom the kind of stress they're under. On the slow-mo of that second hit, you could see the truck completely crossed up. Looked like the rear independent steering was not completely straight when Dan hit those cars. However, he runs 17.78 seconds, and that's good enough to take over the number one spot from Rob Bush in the first blood Ford. And from Granite City, Illinois, this is Freddie Schaefer's Barefoot Tracks, the brand-new 1988 Chevrolet with supercharged, fuel-injected, alcohol-burning Chevrolet power on top of an M4 tank chassis. And earlier, we had a chance to talk to Fred Schaefer about this very special evening of competition for the Illinois team. Fred, we haven't had a chance to see the Barefoot Tracks machine in competition that much in U.S. Hobart Association racing, but with the debut of the new Bigfoot Fast Tracks, you've got to be a little concerned with the performance of that truck. Yes, I am. Uh, the two motors on there, it's really fast on acceleration, and uh, after looking at the track, the only thing I can see to do here is I'm going to have to try and make it up on the corners. Well, do you believe that uh, your machine is going to be able to out-corner that lowrider Ford? Uh, it's going to be tough, but that's that's where I'm going to have to make it up. If it's going to be made up, it's going to have to be on the corners because he's got the acceleration with the twin engines. Well, now, Chandler is using basically stock Ford engines in that truck, and you know darn well, as do most of the Chevy fans, that you're notorious for building some of the most powerful engines in all of monster truck racing. Yeah, he also got all of his weight down low, so, so there's advantages and disadvantages, but I'd say right now he's at a pretty good advantage. Well, the Barefoot Tracks machine has always been one of the strongest of the tanks, and it should be interesting, but I know that uh, this is a very special night for you in competition, right? Yes, it is. Uh, I'd like to dedicate this race to Stephen Shell in uh, Michigan. Now, Steve was with you uh, out of the uh, state of Michigan during the uh, Make-A-Wish program, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes, I was contacted by the Make-A-Wish Foundation, and they called me on the phone, and Stephen's dying wish was to spend the day with Barefoot and meet the Bears and, and get to ride in the trucks. And uh, we tried to fulfill his wish as best we could, and I called him yesterday, and Stephen passed away yesterday morning. Indeed, that was a shame, but Fred, if nothing else, your professionalism and your caring for the fans out there uh, is literally without equal in this sport, and we wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Shelly, Freddie Schaefer is moving up in the starting line, and he's got his work cut out for him against Bob Chandler's new Bigfoot tracks. What do you think? I think this is going to be pretty exciting because these tanks handle these cars a lot differently than the monster trucks. So even though Freddie's experienced driving the monster trucks, he'll have to have a little bit different strategy when he goes over these cars. Freddie Chevrolet launches harder than any tank before the Bigfoot Ford came out. Take a look. First set of cars literally right through the car. Over them. Now making the turn as tight as he can, almost into the mud pit. And unfortunately, that cost him to go wide. Now look at the steering oh. ability of that tank as he hits it <laughs> sideways and then straightens it out to cross the finish line. Well, Shelly, there you can see both tracks were on the first car, and that's all that counts. You can't just hit the cars with one track. They have to have both tires or both tracks in any type of monster truck for it to count. He straightened that thing out while on top of the cars. That's an incredible driving job. Remember, they don't have a steering wheel. They have sticks to steer it, just like a regular tank. 15.05 seconds for Freddie Schaefer in the barefoot track Chevy. Well, here is the machine that Freddie Schaefer is out to beat tonight. This is the 10th edition of Bigfoot machinery to come from Bob Chandler's four-wheel drive at Off-Road Performance Center in St. Louis, Missouri, the Bigfoot Fast Tracks Low Rider Ford Van Tank. Shelly, we had a chance to look at this incredible machine up close earlier and talk to the man himself who started this monster truck craze. Almost 13 years ago, it was Bob Chandler out of St. Louis, Missouri who started the entire monster truck phenomenon with a big blue Ford called Bigfoot. Now in 1988, this machine, the 10th in the Bigfoot series, is an incredible piece of equipment that a lot of people think will dominate this sport just like you did back 12 years ago, Bob. And I guess the main question is, why did you decide to take such a radical approach to the construction of this tank monster? Well, I hate tanks in the first place. I don't know why. But uh, <laughs> uh, a guy came to me as Lauren Pryor out of uh, Colorado with this vehicle. He had built a chassis. It's an M84 tank, or personnel carrier. And he showed it to me on tape. And I tell you what, it was impressive. What I did, I bought it from him and got it, put it all in the interior, and Ford engines and uh, my own steering, you know. And uh, I tell you what, I love it. What do you see coming up in the future for monster trucks? Uh, what I've done in the last year and a half, we started an organization called MTRA, Monster Truck Racing Association, which is strictly involved in safety of all monster trucks, monster tanks, whatever you want to call them. Uh, we've come up with ideas like, like in this one here, there's a remote kill. My crew member can stop this thing anytime he wants. If, if a guy were to knock himself out in this or, or somehow throttle would stick, he could stop it. So I'm, I still don't know where we're going. Uh, you know, I, I work year by year. 
but uh, I want to stay around here for a while, so we're safety, I think, is the number one thing. Here we are again. It seems like history always repeats itself, and Bob Chandler is once again at the forefront of the monster truck wars, this time with tank treads beneath him. The incredible low center of gravity of this machine, as you will see when it takes off the starting line, makes this thing launch so hard. It almost looks like a drag racing pro stalker leaving the starting line. It's the only tank tread vehicle you will ever see that actually does, if you can call it such, a wheel stand. You see the beautiful spun aluminum track wheels that were handmade for this machine. A 110 Unbelievable! Almost clearing all four cars. Chandler behind the wheel of the incredible fast tracks brings it around. And again clears three of the four cars. Absolutely incredible. He didn't seem to run into the same problems that Barefoot had uh, earlier. He rounded that corner very easily, got over the uh, four cars, no problem. The just absolutely incredible job. It corners so well, it's so powerful. Look at this replay of the second hit. Absolutely incredible. The thing was literally five feet in the air from the bottom of the tracks at the elapsed time. 11.44 seconds, almost four seconds faster than Freddie Schaefer's incredible barefoot Chevy. Looking at the slow motion replay here again on the first set of cars, the wheel scan leaving the starting line, or the track stand, I guess. Now, straight up in the air, Chandler hangs on a fully suspended Bench, full suspension underneath this machine. You can see it work on the landing. Makes it a lot smoother than any tank before it. Look at the tread distortion on that thing. You want to talk power? So that will set up a championship final between the Samson Chevrolet of Dan Patrick, the winner of the four-wheel monster truck class, and the brand-new Bigfoot Fast Tracks of Bob Chandler in a championship tank versus monster truck finale. We'll be back with more championship action from Evansville, Indiana at Roberts Municipal Stadium for the U.S. Harvard Association Championship Monster Truck and Mud Racing spectacular. We're back, ladies and gentlemen, to Roberts Municipal Stadium in Evansville, Indiana. Now we move into the United States Hombrot Association's incredible four-wheel drive super modified mud racers. And Shelly Herman, this is going to be an incredible battle, if only because this is one of the shortest mud courses we've ever had to race on in U.S. Hombrot Association history. Yeah, and it did cause some problems last night. Uh, thank goodness they've got that safety net at the end of the tunnel there because uh, the mud patrol really needed it last night. That's true. Of course, Tom Martin, the current uh, national championship points leader in the super modified class, is here. In fact, Greg Stone, his partner, will be driving the mud patrol tonight. But here's our first vehicle. Remember, this is an elapsed time contest in 65 feet of 48-inch deep mud. Bob Lacey from Marion, Indiana, in his funny car style 1969 Jeep CJ called White Lightning. Now, interestingly, this is a nitrous oxide-injected four. 408 cubic inch small block engine and even more amazing it's a chrysler power plant an actual dodge wedge motor this thing with carburetors and of course the nos fogger nitrous oxide system ends up putting out about 1100 horsepower with that nos nitrous oxide system on top marion will uh, marion iowa's own bob lacy excuse me will get a chance to set the pace with the very first run down this short pit now, a lot of the drivers using uh, multiple speed transmissions are not even shifting on this short course they're blasting through in low gear only and that's creating some tremendously high arm RPM finishes. RPM's up, and the Iowa racer leaves the starting line, and lots of tire spin, and he will not be that happy with that run, Shelly. On the replay, yep, there you can see it, a tremendous amount of tire spin. The first man out sometimes has to worry about the water that accumulates on top of the mud, and that may have slowed Bob Lacey down. During the preliminaries, he was in the two-second zone with another problem-plagued pass. You can see the steam coming off the hot exhaust headers. The elapsed time, 3.41 seconds, and Bob will not be very happy with that. Remember, during the preliminary round of competition, we saw a young man, Tom Mintz, the Shake Me 1932 Ford run 1.68 seconds, the quickest elapsed time ever for the 65-foot distance. Here is the brand new 1932 Ford Coupe of Byron Tinky. Now, for years of the U.S. Hobbit Association Championship mud racing circuit, we saw Tinky with, of all things, a Chevy love truck. Here's his brand new piece of equipment. And Shelly, just about any hardcore mud fan can tell where that chassis came from. That is a Mike Fair chassis. <laughs> He's taking his time checking the gauges on the starting line, now bringing the RPMs up. Notice the extended exhaust headers, which, believe it or not, extract extra horsepower from that engine. They extract. They're tuned exhaust headers. Leave the starting line on a good run. And again, a lot of tires, man, and it's not like 
He got out of the throttle just before the finish line. Mud sailing everywhere. The end did not sound in real good at the end of the run. It looked like he got out of the throttle just before the finish line and the truck or vehicle began to sink. Of course, he can't get out of the throttle anywhere when you're on 48 inches of mud, Shelley. Here's the re, uh, replay, 2.81 seconds, the elapsed time. It's good enough for the number one spot, but you can see right here when he gets out of the throttle. Watch the front end take a dive. There it is, right there, sinking almost down to the hubs. And that was about five feet before the finish line. So, Shelly, that was actually a pretty good run. Yeah, but I didn't think he was going to make it there towards the end. Here's a machine that we've seen at least one other time. Brand new vehicle from the state of Michigan. And this should look familiar to all the drag racing fans viewing out there tonight. From Lansing, Michigan, Mike Watros. Believe it or not, you are looking at the 274-mile-per-hour carbon fiber fire, uh, Ford Thunderbird funny car that took Mark Oswald and the Candies and Hughes Motorcraft Nitro funny car team to the NHRA number two spot in professional drag racing in the World Championship points chase. He ran pretty well uh, during the preliminaries. His best run of his career is about For some reason, these guys are having problems getting initial traction. Now, Watros put the nose of the Ford Motorcraft Thunderbird across the finish line. He will receive an elapsed time. But indeed, he also never had the traction that he needed to keep above the mud. So you just need to have the nose over, and it counts as a good run. Exactly. The nose across the finish line will stop the clocks. As you can see, Mark wasn't exactly seeing where he was going very well. We saw him bounce off one of the outer boundary poles just before the finish line. But uh, it's, you, it's interesting in the sense that these cars are not getting that much traction. Watch on the starting line. Yeah, instant tire spin. Instant tire spin. 3.48 seconds will keep uh, Mark Watros down in the number three spot right now. And uh, if nothing else, the engine sounded beautiful for once. He had some ignition problems initially when he debuted this car. You can see the escape hatch open in the funny car style roll cage, of course, and the 274 mile per hour motorcraft quality parts for Thunderbird will slide into the number three spot. As Mark Wantros fires up the motorcraft. Watros, a pretty incredible display of horsepower for the Buttercraft Quality Parts Machine. A wild mud racing in its best. And we'll be back with more championship mud racing in just a moment. the starting line from the small town of Corden, Indiana is Greg Albers and the Fog Bandit number two. Another funny car style Jeep, Shelley. And you know what? This is the first time he's run indoors, so we're really expecting big things out of him. Interestingly enough, it is another Chrysler-powered machine, a nitrous oxide injected, fuel injected Dodge motor. I gotta tell you, these guys are doing their best to plow through this pit. If nothing else, Albers looks pretty happy in the cockpit there. The mark to be 2.81 seconds. But indeed, these guys are not getting the launch that they had hoped to get off the starting line to give us those low two-second and even one-second elapsed times. This all-fiberglass Jeep had some problems on the starting line that is spewing most of its coolant out. See on the launch here just how bad the tire spin was. And again, just muzzling it everywhere on the initial launch. The elapsed time, 3.88 seconds is good now only for the number four position. But if nothing else, Shelly Albers' first indoor run will look pretty spectacular at the finish line. I'm looking forward to seeing more from him. If he can get through with a leak like that, he can get through anything. Absolutely incredible 1987 Ford Ranger of Rob Marshall from New Albany, Indiana. Well, I'm taking a look at his tires now. Now, is he using cut tires or is he using dust? regular as in all machines at u.s Auto association competition these vehicles are required to use department of transportation legal street legal tires now you can see the starting line crew hooking up the kill switch that will shut the engine down as soon as it crosses the finish line without the driver having to worry about it but they can't change the tread pattern on these tires but they must be original street legal over-the-counter available tires now this machine has one of the best working suspensions in the business Again, getting bogged down. That's why they call it a mud bog, getting bogged down just off the starting line. And we are watching, Shelly, uh, an event that is rapidly changing. A lot of these guys have changed gears, have changed tires, everything, to try and get the initial launch that enabled them to run under two seconds flat last night. Here on the launch, you can see the tire spin, but the elapsed time, 3.73 seconds. It's actually a little better than it looked, but it'll only be good right now for the number four spot for Greg Albers. Excuse me, for Rob Marshall's 514 cubic inch Ford. Won't be the odds. 
Well, despite it all, he sure kept his front tires up, and I guess that's what got him through. That's very true. As long as the front end is up, he should be able to get across the finish line in fine fashion, just not as quick as we've seen in past events. But see, that will change the strategy these drivers are using. Now it's a driver's game. It's not just a brute horsepower battle. Now it's going to take some brains to get through this pit. And speaking of brains to get through the pit, here is a young man who has put together literally one of the most astounding vehicles we have ever witnessed. If you were with us recently, you saw the incredible debut of the 1932 Ford Coupe called Shankmate. This is Tom Mintz from Paxton, Illinois. Earlier, we had a chance to talk to one of the newest driving sensations at U.S. Harvard Association Mud Racing. This is Tom Mintz, who took one of the wildest rides we ever saw at Pittsburgh Civic Arena. And, Tom, that was a rough way to get your inauguration into this business. Yeah, it was a pretty wild way to get into it. You seem to be completely uh, aware of everything that was happening. You're out of the car and waving to the crowd almost immediately. But uh, what were your thoughts when that thing was six feet in the air? Well, it happened so fast, I didn't really have time to react. So it just... Uh, I knew I was safe inside the car, so there wasn't nothing to worry about. You had that much faith in the chassis? Yeah, it's awful strong and a lot of protection built into the machine, so it's no problem at all. Well, with that hard of a roll, in fact, the car is out very shortly after that Pittsburgh crash, and you really didn't have to do anything else to the chassis, did you? No, not really. We just had a lot of work to do to the motor and other things to get the car ready to go this week. And it will be a convertible this time out tonight? Yes, it will. <laughs> after the roof came off at Pittsburgh, it was pretty wild. Uh, with your particular machine last night during the preliminaries, recording the quickest a lap's time ever in this particular length fit, 65 feet. You've got to be happy with the way the car's running, though, even though this is only your fourth event. Yeah, we're real happy with the car. We got it hooking a little bit better this week, and that'll make us happy. It's got to be an incredible ride, 65 feet of mud in uh, 1.68 seconds. Yeah, it'll definitely set you back. 2,000 horsepower. Ready to give it everything. For Tom Mintz, the rookie racer, only his fifth event get that incredible 1.68 second elapsed time during preliminaries. No roof after the crash at Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, yet the machine seems to be running better than ever. A new supercharger of the car for this event. The mark to beat, 2.81 seconds with Byron Tinky's brand new 1932 Ford Coupe leading the way. It seems to be the body style to go. The Mud Patrol uh, team ran the first Ford Coupe. Byron Tinky currently leads it with one of those fiberglass replicas. Tremendous pass, and that will easily be good enough for the number one spot. Shelly, that's what Tom Mintz wanted to do. Boy, it looked like he was off to a little bit of a rough start there, too, but he held on to it right across the finish line and then some. In a situation where I thought too much horsepower was going to be a problem, Mintz did spin the tires initially, but man, it hooked up and flew across the finish line. Unbelievable. Look at the steam. Yeah, obviously the engine was heating up pretty seriously. Here is the slow motion replay. Watch the launch. Front end up, the elapsed time, 2.39 seconds. Good for the number one spot. And indeed, Tom Mintz, pegged against the back of the seat, rides it out, airborne across the finish line. Number one for the rookie racer from Paxton, Illinois. Pulling up onto the line is a short wheelbase lightweight machine that was one of the very first of its type at U.S. Harvard Association Racing. This is the one and only Melvin Brown from Uniondown, Ohio. The machine that he has always uh, gone under the name of Blue Max. Now, interestingly enough, Melvin has recently put nitrous oxide injection on this 510 cubic inch Chevy engine, Shelley, and uh, it has helped him a lot. He's got, a, he's got kind of an unusual design there for his car. It's a, it's a very, very lightweight machine, but as you can see, it's also a very short wheelbase. That makes it very hard to control in some mud pits, but uh, with a preliminary run of 2.09 seconds, easily Melvin Brown's best for this distance. He is looking very, very strong at this event. So a short track like this is probably advantageous for him. Uh, especially with the large cubic inch engines and nitrous oxide injection. If you leave it in first gear, you can develop just about as much horsepower as you could at the finish line of a long track. The big cubic inch machines definitely have an advantage on this short track if they leave at a high RPM. And so far, we've seen just about every one of them do just that. Melvin in the uh, rather Spartan cockpit. Not the best of runs for Melvin. It looked like it was going to be a good run, but again, tire spin killed whatever chances he had of battling Tom Mintz on a head-to-head -head basis. Now, we will get a chance to see uh, Melvin in his second vehicle, the Budweiser-sponsored Jeep Funny Car Mud Racer, as for the last couple of events, he has been campaigning both his old Blue Max and uh, Rod Haverty's Budweiser machine. 
On the replay, you can see the tire spin that slowed the machine down. The mud being slung everywhere on this thing. The elapsed time, 3.86 seconds, far off of what he is capable of. A tremendous finish line shot there, though, of one of the best in the business at speed, locking up the brakes. We'll be back with more championship mud racing action from Evansville, Indiana, as the United States Hot Rod Association Mud Bog Championships continue in a moment. back at the United States Hot Rod Association Mud Racing Championships at the Roberts Municipal Stadium in Evansville, Indiana. And on the starting line is an extremely impressive machine based on its performance in the preliminary round. This is the incredible Thundering Heart 1987 Jeep CJ5 of Mike Sneed out of Lakeville, Indiana. Machine with a 454 cubic inch nitrous oxide injected Chevy engine that Shelley Herman ran 2.26 seconds last night. Side manifold explosion at the finish line. And it's a very simple problem that can do some pretty serious damage to the engine. Apparently, he left the nitrous oxide system on as he shut the engine off. An intake valve hung open, and you hear those shotgun blasts out of the exhaust headers. Well, that might be because it is this new motor, and he said that he's only run it once before and that it scared him to death. <laughs> so uh, maybe that was, unanticipa that was uh, unanticipated for this evening. Well, leaving the starting line, he also felt a lot of tire spin, but the elapsed time will be good enough for the number two spot, 2.77 seconds. And I got to tell you, Shelly, this uh, guy is going to be one of our new superstars. This machine has been so strong. Mike Sneed's thundering heart. He sure kept those tires up, too. Look at him. It was a beautiful pass, despite the initial tire spin. There you see the fire out of the pipes of that nitrous oxide explosion at the finish line. This is Tom Martin and Greg Stone with the Mud Patrol from Portage, Indiana. Shelley Herman, these guys are on top of the world right now, literally leading the national championship point standings. But I understand this is the last time we're going to see this team working together. That's true. Tom Martin and Greg Stone have been partners for a long time, but earlier we had a chance to talk to Greg Stone and Tom Martin about tonight's run. There's no question the dominating force in U.S. Hot Rod Association Super Modified Class Mud Racing has been the Mud Patrol, 1932 Ford from Portage, Indiana. The machine is normally driven by Tom Martin, but tonight co-driver Greg Stone will be behind the wheel. And Greg, uh, you're pretty known, pretty much known for some uh, out-the-back-door driving. Well, yeah. It, uh, last night was a little bit interesting. and car started bouncing a little bit on me and didn't uh, had a little trouble stopping. Well, you won the preliminary round with a tremendously quick elapsed time, 1.93 seconds, but this uh, tonight's ride is going to be one of your last in this machine, isn't that right? Yes, uh, me and Tom. Tom's going to continue to run the, the car on his own. I'm going to be moving elsewhere in the country, so... But we'll still see you on the U.S. Harvard Association Trail with something, yeah, right? Yeah, I plan to get back into it. Well, I think one of the most tense guys at, uh, at this event tonight will be Tom Martin himself, the man that we saw run two seconds flat at our last event, the first man under two seconds flat in a 100-foot pit. And, Tom, uh, since the machine is in the points lead and both of you are capable of accumulating points, this is going to be a little nervous moment for you tonight. Well, he's never let me down before, and I got confidence in him. The question is, is the machine up to it tonight? Oh, it's definitely up to it. Well, indeed, this particular pair, or trio, I should say, uh, with uh, the father and mother crew chief and Greg Stowe behind the wheel, and, of course, Tom Martin looking on, will be the one to watch, as always, at U.S. Harvard Association Racing. Moving up to the starting line now, the nitrous oxide injected, fuel injected, methanol burning, 540 cubic inch Chevrolet engine in this 1932 Ford Coupe that uh, during the preliminaries ran 1.93 seconds for the official win. You can see Tom Martin to the right side there, who has normally driven this machine. Greg Stone, a phenomenal crew chief at this court, who is responsible for the performance of this vehicle, is now driving. Tom is like an expectant father in a maternity room here. He's overseeing every last detail of this run because it's going to be the last one. He wants to go out a winner. Well, the final uh, handshake and everything else complete. Tom heads for safety, at least away from the slip mud. Greg Stone, crew chief and part time driver in his last run in the Mud Patrol 32 Ford, looking for the number one spot, the time to beat. Good pass, blasting across the finish line, locking up the brakes, and that will be a tremendously close run to Tom Mintz, 2.39 second run. Look at the crowd. They cannot believe the performance from this vehicle. I don't think that uh, Tom can either. He's running over there as fast as he can. I, I'm sure he's going to congratulate his partner over there. Well, Greg is obviously thrilled with that rod. Here we go up. with the meeting of the minds here down at the finish line shutdown area. 
I'll tell you, he is a happy young man. His last ride ever in this machine, saluting the crowd. What a ride. And indeed, like I said, it's going to be so close to that 2.39 second run that is leading right now for Tom Mintz's Shake Me 32 Ford. Look at the smile on this team's face, and they don't even know what the elapsed time is yet. Here's the launch. A lot of tire spin, but the front end up almost immediately. Beautifully straight run. Here's the elapsed time. 2.19 seconds. Good for the number one spot again for the Mud Patrol team of Greg Stone and Tom Martin. Way to go, guys. Is Heath Molt. This is a 1977 Chevy Love truck that is actually street legal with the addition of uh, mufflers. It's got headlights and everything in it behind the uh, fiberglass grill. But interestingly, it's almost basically a, a street legal truck, Shelley. It's a small block, 355 cubic inch Chevrolet. And I don't think anybody's anticipating one second lap times out of this machine, but I'll tell you what, he's got a crowd of people here pulling for him. You wouldn't believe. Sitting patiently on the starting line, waiting for the green flag with a flagman now leaves the line. He's got forward momentum, and that's a start, doing his best to keep the machine going. The crowd is literally scanning up for this kid. He has got a lot of fans here just to see the local racer inch his way towards the finish line. He's still got movement. It's starting to sink down, though, and he's only five feet from the finish line. He's still going to stay in the throttle, but there's the red flag. Oh. And as Heath Moulton looks on, the distance on the run, 57 feet even. If nothing else, he'll be back. We're back in Evansville, Indiana for more U.S. Harmon Association Championship Mud Racing. The Mad Mando utilizes a Chevrolet power plant, 454 cubic inch big block, but again, with bone stock tires, Hanner is just here to try and make it out of the pit, Shelly. I'd sure like to see him do it, too. I like to root for the underdog. I'll tell you, that would be quite an accomplishment. As tough as this mud has been for some of the supercharged machines, the 1,800-pound lightweights, if he could make it through this pit on bone stock street tires, it would be quite amazing. The uh, personality aspects of mud racing is the different tread patterns these guys create on these tires. Leaves the starting line, and he's not looking real strong initially. A lot of tires spin way, way up in the RPM range. High enough to kill the drive train, unfortunately. You can see the smoke coming out from underneath the hood. That was a transmission problem for Hanner Gregory. But if nothing else, we just set a new RPM record for this event. That was a solid 11,000 RPM pass. Now that's two in a row now that uh, didn't make it through the mud. It's a tough, tough break. Hanner obviously doesn't look real thrilled about that, and if nothing else, we may have to tow him. I'd be interested to see on the replay if indeed uh, the tires were spinning at the speed that the RPM indicated, because like I said, that big block Chevy was singing. Here we see him leave the line. Initially, mud goes slinging everywhere. He never got any launch to speak of, and that thing's flying. Yeah, what a shame. Talking 120 mile an hour wheel speed on that one for Hannah Gregory before he finally dug in. Just a minute, you'll see everything stop. There we go. That was all she wrote. This is the mud shark. And uh, if you look closely, you'll see a few changes since the last time the mud shark ran. They've changed their wheelbase from 100 to 120 inches. That's right. And earlier we had a chance to talk to Mike about the many changes in this machine for this event. Well, Mike, while you still own one of the most popular machines ever to hit a mud pit anywhere, it's going to be substantially different than in the past tonight. Yeah, we've changed the suspension quite a bit, lengthened the vehicle out 20 inches, and narrowed the front axle, hoping to keep the tread width uh, in the same pass as everybody else, more or less. Well, with the longer wheelbase, it actually acts as a lever to give you a lot more traction on the starting line, but why the narrowed uh, front while we're keeping the stock rear tread width? The front axle we were running before was 10 inches wider than the rear axle, and that was causing us a lot of trouble with the wheel and tire combination that we're running. Well, is that one of the causes of the car's uh, rather radical performances that we've witnessed in the past? That and the short wheelbase was a real problem. Well, last night during preliminaries, you got into some ruts that took it out of bounds, or almost out of bounds, I should say, but it still seemed to run a lot straighter than normal. Uh, possibly you'll be able to use a little bit more of that 1,400 horsepower you got? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I feel real good about tonight. But obviously the Mud Shark hasn't been altered uh, enough that we can't recognize one of the more popular no, machines ever built. No doubt about that. You'll recognize it. <laughs> 
Mike Erderly, the Michigan Terror in the Mud Shark 1964 Chevrolet Corvette. Supercharged, fuel-injected, big block Chevrolet motivation with that new extended wheelbase we talked about, a new narrowed front tread, everything different, trying to keep this machine from crashing. Everybody who watches U.S. Hobbit Association Mud Racing knows that this is the wildest single vehicle on the circuit. And Shelley, all Mike wants to do is make it through this pit without crashing. He finished number two in the preliminary route. Well, I think all the Corvette fans are rooting for him so that he'll finish first tonight. The wildest single machine in the business. The mark to beat, 2.19 seconds. A great run, airborne for the Mud Shark, landing relatively straight, though, and that is what the Mud Shark is all about. There it is, fist in the air. Mike Erderly taking, as always, a wild, wild ride through this 65-foot-long oh, mud bed. He seems pleased with it. I guess we'll have to admit that that run may be good enough to challenge the Mud Patrol team of Tom Martin. And Greg Stone for the number one spot, the mark to beat, 2.19 seconds. Let's look at the replay, always a wild ride. He stayed on top the whole time. Looks like a little bit of excess smoke out of the left bank of cylinders there. That may have been an engine problem coming up, but the elapsed time, the mark to beat was 2.19 seconds. Mike Erderly, the incredible mud shark, as we watch him go airborne over the finish line, 2.29 seconds. Look at this thing. Four feet in the air, the typical mud shark rough landing. Erderly steers her straight away from the net and away from the walls. Here's another angle of that incredible run. Now you can see the ruts that have developed in the track and Early is trying to stay within them sideways across the finish line and then airborne, missing the number one spot by a tenth of a second. We will return with more championship mud racing action and you don't want to leave because we've got some of the greatest mud racers ever. For more championship mud bog racing with the biggest superstars in this sport today at the United States Hobbit Association Mud Racing Championships in Evansville, Indiana. An amazing truck, no doubt. No supercharger, no fuel injection, one four-barrel carburetor burning gasoline. He does use nitrous oxide injection for that extra oxygen and about 400 extra horsepower. We told him to forget he's on TV tonight. He said he was gonna. We'll pretend we're not here. Well, he made it through, but the TV jinx continues. Lots of tire spin. You could see the engine popping and banging at about the 25-foot marker. As he leaves the starting line with a lot of tire spin, you see the flashes of fire out of the pipe, Shelley, and that indicated the engine problems, possibly the nitrous oxide, uh, not quite right. 4.20 seconds the elapsed time. It'll unfortunately keep him well down in the pack. Well, at least he didn't break anything on the car. That's true. The best part about his last couple of national event appearances is that he hasn't broken any major parts in his uh, limited budget is still allowing him to attend events. Tim Hall from Champaign, Illinois, with a brand new piece of equipment, the Hall Brothers' gorgeous new Obsession Ford Ranger. This altered wheelbase Ford-powered machine made its maiden voyage in the preliminary round. And indeed, Jelly, these guys may be ones to watch. They spared no expense in building this fuel-injected Ford-powered Bronco. Leaves the starting line with a horrible amount of tire spin. And the Obsession boys are not going to do much on this run. Digging in, and again, looks like we may have had a transmission problem there. A lot of smoke out of the engine. You can see the wheels stop, but the RPMs kept rising. And it looks like Tim Hall is in the cockpit saying, oh, what have I done? You know, this 21-year-old has been racing for seven years now, so if experience counts, he should be able to have a good run out of this. That's true. At our most recent event in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Chad Miller in the instant T, 1927 Ford T Roadster, recorded his best ever elapsed time. Now, this nitrous oxide-injected, fuel-injected, 509 cubic inch Chevy-powered machine is one of the very few street roaster or drag racing style altered machines that are running in mud racing. The mark to beat, still the national points leaders, Tom Martin and his driver, Greg Stone, in the mud control at 2.19 seconds. And there's the green flag as Chad Miller looks down the track, slaps down the face shield, and prepares to launch. A good run, good, good run. Sideways across the finish line and spinning her out before the net. Who said this track's going away? You can get that thing off the line if you know how to do it. The Instant T Roadster, again, proving that that design is one of the most efficient in all of mud racing, Shelley. 
Here's the, uh, the slow motion replay. You can see a little bit of tire spin on the starting line, but instantly up on the mud. And that's exactly what he was looking for. The elapsed time, 2.62 seconds. Should be good for one of the top four spots. Look at that thing. Blast across the finish line. Airborne out of the pit. Then locking up the brakes as he heads for the safety net and spinning her out. Looking at it from a head-on angle, Shelly, you can see how those ruts helped him. Oh, yeah, he's right in there, but he stays on top. So many of the other drivers had problems where they'd get into a rut and they'd sink right to the bottom. And even when it goes sideways, the ruts help keep him in bounds past the finish line as he takes a wild bouncing ride down through the shutdown area. But indeed, 2.62 seconds. On the starting line next, Melvin Brown. We already saw him make a run in the Blue Max, his own mud racer, Shelley. But this is the machine originally campaigned by Rod Haverty, the Budweiser-sponsored funny car-style Jeep that uh, Melvin is now campaigning out of his Ewington, Ohio hometown. Well, Melvin's keeping this uh, racing and logging career all in the family. His dad is on his pit crew, uh, and he's expected to get his own vehicle later this year. Budweiser sponsors fiberglass body Jeep CJ with a fuel injection. Makes another good run, carrying the left front wheel for more than half of the course. A lot of torque and a lot of horsepower evident in that incredible Chevy-powered Jeep, Shelley. Melvin had a little bit of tire spin problems off the starting line, but once it got up, you'll be able to see on the replay that left front tire literally off the ground. Let's watch. Head on. Look, the left front tire comes up immediately. Nothing but torque from this Chevrolet. And look at it. Ooh. The left front tire never even in the mud. 2.59 seconds will move him by three hundredths of a second into the number four spot ahead of Chad Miller. And you can just see how his Brakes lock up there, too. Yeah, it's in control the whole time. As soon as you feel that kill switch, shut the motor down, you hit the brakes and prepare to stop these things. Now, from another angle, look at that. Is that a beautiful picture of horsepower? The left front wheel up from sheer torque, never even touching the mud, blasting across the finish line. That is an amazing shot. Our cameraman did their job there. Oh, and an amazing car, too. What power. This is Mark Green. And during the preliminary round, Green had one of the most Astounding starting line launches I've ever seen, Shelley. If anybody has a perfect suspension for a mud racer in competition here tonight at Evansville, Indiana, this man does. I'm looking forward to seeing how well he does tonight because he came in with a good time in the preliminaries last night. 2.19. Excellent pass during the first rounds. Four, 468 cubic inch big block Chevrolet. You can see that it has carburetors and not fuel injectors on top. But it does, of course, use nitrous oxide injection. The Mac Tool is sponsored. Chevy Power Jeep CJ, the Jeep Heartbeat, as it is called, moves it up. Puts it into gear, slaps down the face shield, sets his line down that track, and now nails the throttle. A good, good run, and man, did he drive it out the back door into the safety net, the first man that actually had to use that U.S. Harvard Association safety innovation that has saved so many racers' machines. But uh, this innovation, like I said, purely for the safety of uh, the hall, the arena, and, of course, the racers' machines has worked flawlessly. And you only see that kind of safety innovations in U.S. Hobbit Association racing. On the starting line launch, a little bit of tire spin. That's something that we've come to expect with the elapsed time. 2.44 seconds should be good again for the number four spot. Well, the number four spot's taking a beating, Shelley. Well, it seems like it's very popular, but I'm sure most of them would prefer to be number three or number two. Airborne across the shutdown area, finally landing, and then into the net. The last man with a chance to knock the incredible Mud Patrol 32 Ford of Tom Martin and Greg Stone out of the number one spot is Tim Ritchie, the Michigan racer with a Jeep funny car that has, of all things, Shelly, another Chrysler power plant inside. Well, if anybody can uh, beat Tom's record, it certainly could be learning to fly. Uh, Tim Ritchie has racing in his blood. His whole family's involved with uh, the race business. They own the track and trail racetrack out in Buchanan. Buchanan, Michigan veteran with a 512 cubic inch Dodge wedge engine with two four-barrel carburetors and nitrous oxide injection. Already this season, the U.S. Howard Association Racing has put down a couple of tremendous low two-second elapsed times and certainly is a threat to the Mud Patrol team, and Tom Martin and Greg Stone know it. This event will not be over. So this machine crosses the finish line, and we receive the elapsed time. Starting line crew hooking up the kill switch. Now telling him to stage her up and pointing to the flagman. Ready. And pop 
Wood and banging off the starting line for Jim Ritchie. What a smoke up from underneath the entry compartment. He makes it across the finish line, but no question, that was not good enough to knock the Mud Patrol out of the number one spot. And indeed, our winners again, the superstars of this sport, Tom Martin and Greg Stone in the Mud Patrol 32 Ford. Tim Ritchie obviously very disappointed, Shelly. Let's look on the replay. As you can see, his front tires are up, but then he starts to get a little bit bogged down. The elapsed time, 5.40 seconds. Indeed, not anywhere near good enough to make a difference in this championship battle. And you can see there's quite a bit of smoke coming out of there towards That's the true, end. That's true, and I don't think that was just steam, Shelley. I think that meant engine problems for the big block Chrysler powered Jeep funny car. But indeed, the Mud Patrol of Tom Martin and Greg Stone wins again here at U.S. Armored Association Championship Action, and indeed will be back from Evansville, Indiana, and Roberts Municipal Stadium in just a moment. We're back at Evansville, Indiana's Robert Municipal Stadium for a U.S. Harvard Association monster truck action in a very, very rare battle. Shelly Herman, this will be a monster truck versus monster tank championship dash. Now, originally, we were going to see the Samson Chevrolet of Dan Patrick in its first ever championship final. We saw a little bit of smoke out of the engine compartment on their last run that took the number one spot for this class. So it looks like Rob Fuchs and the first blood Ford from Woodstock, Illinois, will be in this finale. Well, uh, this is certainly a break for him because I didn't think he expected to be back here. But the fans uh, are definitely are in two camps here. Some really think the monster truck can take it. Others have all their confidence placed in the Bigfoot fast track. Here's the great flag for Rob Hughes. A nice, nice watch. Now, as far as monster truck racing is concerned, you don't want to get too airborne over those cars. The higher you get in the air, the slower your run's going to be. But Rob had to hesitate there. Coming out of the second, third. Huge jump! Carrying almost all four cars, <laughs> bouncing around. A great job. The crowd loved that one. Well, he's not even sticking around to uh, to, to wave bye-bye. He's Man, out of there. That was a rough, rough landing. Rob Fuchs, although he hasn't been seen much in U.S. Hobbit Association competition, is definitely earning a reputation for himself with that kind of performance here tonight. Let's take a look at that second hit in slow motion. This is going to be awesome. Full speed into the first, second set of cars. Look at the air this thing grabs. The elapsed time, 14.36 seconds. The quickest run by any regular four-wheel monster truck of the event by almost three full seconds. Indeed, a tremendous run for the youngster, only 28 years old, from Woodstock, Illinois. Well, pulling out, Shelley, is the machine that is here simply to win this event. Bob Chandler, the man behind the Bigfoot legacy himself, is driving tonight rather than one of the corporate wheelers. Indeed, Chandler running 11.44 seconds in the first round of this certainly rates a huge edge. You know, we had the chance to uh, take a little drive in that earlier today, and I got to tell you, we just when I just came around the corner like that, my heart stopped. That's you get really jarred in that thing, and we weren't even going over any cars. A lot of power in this twin-engine machine, well, although it is a... Leave the starting line hard and sailing over the first set of cars. Chandler goes wide on the turn, smacks the wall, and now straightens it out for the second hit. Almost clearing the entire set of cars across the finish line. Man, he hit that wall hard down there. Unbelievable ride for Bob Chandler, never slowing down for a minute. Here on the slow motion replay on the first hit, Chandler in the cockpit takes a hard, hard smack. That first set of cars landing beautifully, Shelly. And then as you see, he comes around the corner here. He, he clipped it a little bit. There was a... The elapsed time to beat, 14.36 seconds. And as Chandler lands on this slow motion replay, bouncing around the cockpit, he crosses the finish line in 11.87 seconds. And that will take the overall championship for a very happy Bob Chandler. The Bigfoot legacy lives on. Well, once again, the United States Hobbit Association has managed to produce another tremendous mud racing and monster truck event, Shelley. Yeah, and you know what's so cute is I had a chance to talk to Tom after his run, and he was upset with his driver, and do you know why? I give up. 
He forgot to turn the little light on on top of the Mud Patrol. That's true. No showmanship tonight. Just sheer horsepower that took the win for the Mud Patrol team. And I got to tell you, the Monster Truck Wars, I think Bob Chandler has created a machine that might almost be too fast for the opposition. Well, it might be too fast, but I think that it'll give a lot of the people coming up the pike some real incentive to make their trucks the best. <laughs> That's for sure, because the way the Bigfoot Fast Tracks outran the competition here tonight, there is literally no one close to that new twin-engine Ford. Indeed, the United States Armored Association, however, will be presenting more championship programs just like tonight's all across the country, and we'll be there to cover it for you. Hopefully, you'll join us then. On behalf of myself, Fred Kepner, and Shelley Herman, thanks for being with us, and hope to see you again soon at the next United States Armored Association Monster Truck and Mud Racing Spectacular. Thank you. Thank you.